This is FRQ number 6 for IV chemistry. It's a paper 2 style question. It's on redox chemistry. Um, and it's got two beakers. One has got a green solution, one with a red. Two different metals. Uh, so it says here beaker 1 contains metal M. And then a solution of YCl2. So we're going to have some Y2 plus ions and some chloride ions. Going to be a spectator ion there. And the other one we have the opposite. We have Y metal and then we have N2 plus ions in here, and then some Cl minus ions as well. Okay, so then it says beaker 1 stays the same as time progresses, so it stays green, this metal stays the same, but then in beaker 2, uh, it changes color, so this is going to change from red to green, this is going to start to deteriorate, and we're going to form this, this other metal M on top of here. So it says create an activity series for Y and M, so let's go to, let's go to beaker 2 here, so in beaker 2, what we have happening is Y is oxidizing. It's turning into Y2+, plus, and it's giving up two electrons. And the M2+, plus on the other side, is taking those two electrons and becoming M metal. Okay? So what that tells us then is that Y is reactive as a metal, and that M does not react as a metal. So for creating an activity series, what we would do is we would have Y on top, and then M below. Okay. Now then it says metal X is a stronger reducing agent. So we don't have X in either of these, but it says it's a stronger reducing agent than both Y and M. Where would X fit into the activity series? So it's obviously it's going to be on top or below. The question is, does this mean that X is more reactive as a metal or less reactive? So what I would do to kind of simplify this down, I think the oxidizing and reducing agents has a lot of if this then. It's too hard to work out in your head. So let's take X. So X can turn into X2 plus and two electrons or X2 plus can gain two electrons and turn into X. Okay, so let's look at what's happening in each of these. So, in this one, my X is oxidizing, which means X here is acting as a reducing agent. And in this one, my X2 plus is being reduced to X, which means the X2 plus is being acting as my oxidizing agent. So this says that X is a stronger reducing agent. Okay, so that's talking about this scenario. So when it says it's a strong reducing agent, that means that this reaction is very favorable. Okay, this has a very positive voltage. This is going to happen. So when it says it's a stronger reducing agent, what that means is that X is more reactive than these, and so therefore X would fit on top of this activity series. Now, from here, we're going to take these two beakers. We're going to rearrange slightly. What we're going to do is we're going to take Y, put it with Y2+, take M, put it with the M2+, we're going to construct a battery. Okay, so this is our metal M. Let's get a color coding on this. This is our metal Y. This is our M2 plus solution. And this is our Y2 plus solution. Let's see if I can get a different color to show up there. Y2 plus. Okay, so it says complete the drawing below to set up a functional galvanic cell. Label the direction of the electron flow, cathode, and anode. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to connect these two things with a wire. Okay. Second thing we need to do is we're going to need a salt bridge. So salt bridge will fit right here. So we're going to fit some kind of slurry in here. I'm going to put potassium nitrate so that we can maintain our charge neutrality as we complete this circuit. Okay. That says label the direction of electron flow, cathode, and anode. So for that, we kind of have to go back to what happened up above for this particular reaction. So if we go back and look, we had that beaker 1 didn't do anything with the metal M, and beaker 2, where it had the metal as Y, with, it did react. So the reaction that happened was Y turned into Y2+, plus, and then the M2+, plus became metal M. So likewise, those are going to be the two half reactions that occur in this cell in order for a spontaneous reaction to occur. So we can tell by the single replacement reactions which happened and which didn't 
which one of these will have a positive voltage. So what's going to happen in this is that the Y metal is going to turn into the Y2 plus ions, and then the M2 plus is going to turn into the M metal. Okay? So what we have happening here is that the Y turns into Y2 plus, and then the electrons are going to leave this and go through the wire over to the other side, where they are picked up by the M, and then the M is, is going to have these electrons come down through this, and they're going to meet with the M2+, plus, and then that's going to turn into the metal there. So what we have happening is, is we have over here, we are gaining the electrons. So we're seeing that the M2+, plus is being reduced, and so that would be then our cathode. Okay. On this side, on the other hand, this is where our oxidation is occurring. We're losing the electrons, and so therefore this would be the anode. Now, the anode refers specifically to the electrode. The cathode refers specifically to the electrode. So the M metal is the cathode. The Y metal is the anode, uh, where those are occurring. Um, and it says labeled direction of electron flow. They would flow from the anode to the cathode, of course. Is that it? That's all it asks for. Now, in addition to that, we would also see the concentration of Y2 plus would go up. Uh, the amount of, of Y would decrease over time. M would increase in mass over time. The concentration here would go down. And then also, because the electrons are leaving here to go over here, we're losing negative charge. So we would see nitrate ions flowing from here into here. And we would see potassium ions flowing into here to keep the excess negative charge balanced in terms of total charge. Okay. Uh, and then if we had a reduction potential list, we could add those two together and end up with a total thing. So in number four it says describe one change that could impact the voltage of the cell in number three and how it would impact. So there's two answers you can give for this. One I'm pretty clear on and one I'm not. Um, the, the easy one is, is concentration. Okay, so concentration will affect the voltage on this. Uh, you can justify that with Nernst's equation. I, I prefer to go through a physical route. So, let's say I took M2 plus concentration and I increase it, okay? Well, what that's going to do is then the M2 plus is then pulling the electrons more than it was before. I had more positive charge pulling on that than I did at the surface of this metal. So, that's going to increase the voltage, okay? Now, if instead of that I had increased the Y2 plus, now I've got more positive charge over here pulling these electrons that are trying to go in the other direction. So, that if I increase that, would decrease the voltage. And then if I decrease the concentration here, I'd have less positive charge pulling on those electrons. That would then uh, decrease the voltage. If I decrease this, the voltage would go up. The other one you could say is that the temperature. So I'm having some difficulty coming up with a straight answer to this, but the increase in the temperature will affect the voltage of this, potentially, uh, since it's not at equilibrium. And and that, I believe, based on empirical evidence, would make the voltage go up if we increase the temperature. Um, and henceforth, why you would put a battery in the freezer uh, or, or warm it in your hands if it's running low. Um, but I have not seen any official confirmation of that, so if you have any, you can feel free to comment on that. Okay.